I've created the ultimate must have in place list for individuals and teams. And Wandering Zen is back with a trip to the 9 11 Memorial in New York City today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 134. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. You know, big day of uh, things to talk about, Jan O'Brien. We have uh, obviously 9-11 is today. You know, I, that is just something I think will impact everybody on earth <laughs> in one way, shape or form, you know, probably forever. Um, we also, years. Yeah. And we're also approaching, um, which, you know, obviously that's important, 9-11. I don't, I don't want to, to, to just brush that aside, but for crying out loud, uh, California, anyway, is four days from six months of COVID-19 lockdown. So uh, we're, we're six months in. And, what the heck? Cali and California and the West Coast is burning. Yeah, like, got, horribly. We got all that going on. I mean, I'm telling you, on? today, once again, today outside, it looks like Mars. There is, yeah, the, yeah. you know, it is gold outside. It is just the eeriest, eeriest thing. I think it's just a foreshadowing of what's happening in the world. And we're, honestly, we're seeing that those skies, that smoke comes this way in Vegas. And yeah. we've had some of the weirdest uh, uh, sunsets and, the, to your point, Mars. And by the way, speaking of Mars, um, oh, that's an highly, highly recommend the Netflix series Away. Oh. oh my God, totally binge watched it. I've been okay. passing it on to everybody. It's got Hillary Swank in it. It is all about going to Mars, but it's really not even about that. It's about the, it's brilliant between the characters. Watch it away. Very, very cool, very cool. There you go. Uh, and with all that going on, uh, real estate's still booming. Hmm. Seriously booming. And wanted to start a, a team success series because as you know, I am walking my talk here and together with Cosmo Morabi and this great team of, I think we're up to seven agents now. Very cool. Uh, seven agents, we are putting all the things in place that we coach here at WBNL Coaching. And so I decided to share in the next two episodes, my exact must have list of things I have been putting in place, the recommendations I have for anybody that's just even an individual, but specifically if you're a team, I'm gonna really talk more about being a team, but just know if you don't have a team, the things I'm going to talk about in the next two episodes are, I think, the must-have items that you have in place to run a successful real estate business. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome uh, two-parter. And then you have a lot of other great stuff you are planning for the next uh, yep. few weeks, we're too. Gonna, so, we're going to do that. And, and Wandering is in is back because I'm back in California, and I really couldn't. It was hard for me to get things done when I was in Florida, which, by the way, Jan is heading there this weekend. I'm wearing my Wandering But Not Lost Wander Florida t-shirt today. and Which you can which you can actually purchose yourself at WBNL, yes, or excuse can. me, WanderingButNotLost.com. Just the go to the shop. The, 20, the 27th state in That's the right. Union, is that correct? Is that what that Yes, means? and more national parks and monuments in Florida than one would think. It's not just uh -huh. the Everglades. And honestly, yeah. I am heading out tomorrow as we record this on September 11th, 2020. I'm heading to the great state of Florida. I'm very excited about my trip. And I'll be heading up to visit family in the great state of Georgia. And I'm very glad that Jan will be there and not me. Okay, well, that's good. Right. <laughs> but anyway, on Wanderings Inn, we're going to go to New York City and actually uh, pay a little homage to the 9-11 Memorial if you haven't been there or you have not yeah, heard about it. Stuff. You know, we're just going to have a short segment today, but just, you know, take, take, take a listen. Take some time to listen to it. It is an incredible thing. And then we're going to have a lot of information and pictures and videos on the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com or WanderingButNotLost.com. So yeah, what do you think, Jan? Should let's we jump dive. in? Let's dive in. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, welcome to episode 134. This is a two-parter in the, we're going to have a team success series, but I'm going to talk about these must-have items in place. I, I start to call it tools and resources, but I'm just going to say it's the must-have list. 
and I'm gonna do four of the nine. There's nine if you're building a team, there's nine. There's only eight if you're not building a team. Okay, so there you go. So let's jump into part one of your must have in place list to have a successful business and specifically a team. Number one on my list is gonna be no one is, if you listen to a, a, our podcast or you know me, you know I talk about this all the time, but I believe the most important thing to have in place is a real estate software solution. And if you're running a team, it needs to be, in my opinion, one of the all-in-one platforms. Right. Okay. And I and and I particularly love and use and endorse KB Core by Inside Real Estate. Now, if you don't go with one of these solutions, and there's competitors, there's Boomtown, Sync, Commissions Inc. is what that is. There's uh, two or three others that are out there that are they cost a little bit more the one thing i love about kb core it's definitely scalable and a lot more affordable but it's not only do you want these things i'm going to tell you what is what in my opinion needs to be in your all-in-one right platform because if you don't get it all in one then you have to go a la carte and get all these tools so your real estate software solution has to have a website and it has to have a consumer facing idx website that the consumer is going to enjoy being on that can compete with the Zillow's, the Realtor.com's, the Redfin's, where the people are, okay? It has to have a CRM, a client relationship management that's more than just an email contact system. I'm talking about state-of-the-art, drip campaigns that you can use text, you can use email, and you can use video. So KB Core has a BombBomb integration. I'm a fan of BombBomb. I, we're, we're having so much success with our videos that we're doing. Uh, so that CRM has to have that. The next feature of your solution has to be a lead capture, nurture, and conversion element. I mean, that is the whole purpose of it. Even with your sphere, you've got to be able to get people to want to give you their information and then have a way to stay in touch with them so that you can nurture and convert them eventually. And you need to be able to have a software system that is reminding you to stay on track and do that. So this first one I'm spending a little time on because it is the foundation, the nucleus of your business, whether you're an individual agent or a team. Now, the one I'm talking about here and why I say uh, a KB Core is because if you're going to build a team, you need to provide all these same tools I'm going through to your agent. That's right. So the real estate software solution has a major learning curve to it. And I'm a techie and I like it. Okay. And I became the expert of this KB Core system because we, we used this in our last company. And I love it for, for the reasons I'm sharing with you. It has more. But wait, there's more. Of course. Uh, it has a home valuation uh, automated program that is in it. It has a, a home search app that comes with it. But I've actually decided that I like the home search app personally that comes with the MLS. Um, so, but you have to have an app that you can share with people so that people can be on their phone using your app, not Zillow. Okay. And it needs a blog. I really think it needs a blog because of things that we're doing with marketing and putting our videos up and we're able to share our content back onto Facebook and use it in our marketing. All right. So those tools are all in number one. What I'm yeah. And you know, what, let me just say KB Core, if you, you have jumped into that or, or you're going to jump into KB Core, what Jan was saying about not always being the most user friendly platform on the backside when you're creating your email templates and stuff like that. I just spent, I think, probably three hours in KB Core a couple of days ago, uh, updating a lot of uh, a campaign that I had uh, going in there. And it, it, um, it, it, once you get the hang of it, it actually is pretty intuitive and it's pretty user friendly. But what Jam was saying is so true. It is the the, the single fact that there is one place that's got email, yes. text, and video is huge. And how you can integrate those and how you can play around with the campaigns and the different, uh, you know, uh, the possibilities are kind of endless, I guess is what I'm saying. So it's great. And the front end user face of the website, our interface of the website is actually very functional too. Right. You know, it's, it's relatively generic for what you can buy on the basic, but at the same time, it looks professional. It's yeah. neat and clean. There's plenty of information on there for the the, the consumer when they go there. So uh, I give KB Corp a huge uh, thumbs up as well. And I'm not even talking about, those are the basic requirements right. that I'm telling you there's even more that is in there. there's a market set there's a whole market uh, place where you can get them to do the pay them to do the advertising for you right. they have very effective things called property boost that you can just 
for 60 bucks, you can um, boost your property and let them handle if you don't understand how to do Facebook and generate leads for yourself. It's very powerful stuff. And and uh, those, but you got to look for that. And if you don't go with an all-in-one solution, I frankly think if you look at the KV Core as a solution, you'll spend just as much money, if not less, than if you went and got individual, every program costs 50 to 100 bucks, right? Well, and this is single so, sign-on for the whole shebang. And that's what's that's so it. wonderful about everything all-in-one. You know, one place to go. I'm telling you, if you have more than one place to, to log in, you're not going to do it. It's and what true. I love Nobody is does it. Everybody know? on our team has all of that. And right. not just a little baby website, a full blown site with the full CRM. And then as a team leader, Cosmo and I, we build, like Matt was just talking about, that's what we did. Matt's doing it for a client. Now we have, we build out the campaigns. That's part right. of the value proposition. We build all the campaigns out. We have it the way it works because we know what works. And when they plug into what we're already doing in our all in one. So number one, most important part, if you can make it happen for you, an all in one real estate solution. Um, even though I've made a decision to go to two other tools, uh, that I think are a little bit better. One of them is for the home valuation. I prefer ePropertyWatch property watch now, just so I think it's a little bit more in depth, but there's a great built-in tool for just a nurturing inside of KB course. So that's yeah, the point being is you don't have to do that. If you find things that are more robust that you prefer, you can have that, but this has got it all. So you yeah. don't have to go out and you still have the product that you need. So, well, and one more thing, cause you can tell we're huge fans of this. We um, are number. The, the other thing that I like about it is, and I am one in the series, I'm going to talk about must have apps for real estate. And one of them, just to give you a little idea, is the mobile app version of your software. That's so right. if I'm out in the field, I have a KB Core app that allows me to make my phone calls, put my notes in, um, even do a video. I can do a core video. I can do a bomb bomb video right from my app and send it to somebody, record one or go to my library and send one. So, OK, huge fans right there. If you just do that, your life is going to be better. But we have more to share. Okay? We're talking about the must have things in place for your business and for your team. Number two, a monthly local newsletter is my number two. And I just, you know, I, I'm so happy wow. to share this today because how, I don't know how many times you go back and look at our, our I've never heard you talk about this. Our before, vault. Yeah. If you go look at our vault of, of podcasts, yeah. I'm sure 25% of the time I'm talking about this one idea. Now, why I'm making a big deal about it today is because I have been doing it. In fact, it's on my agenda today. I have to start working on our newsletter for the team for September. I mean, for, uh, yeah, September. I always do it about mid-month because I wait for the stats to come out. Smart. And I use Keeping Current Matters, another highly, I highly endorse Keeping Current Matters because I love getting the content from them that we use. And then I use that, that content to help me put together a brilliant, if I do say so myself, market update, a housing report that I do every month. I enjoy doing this housing report and I will be recording that later today. Um, but here's what else needs to go into your monthly local newsletter. And I'm gonna just cover these points and I'm gonna give you a couple success stories because our team is having success because they're sending a monthly newsletter out. There you go. And as a team leader, we build this out. We build this out because it's not hard for me to do. I do it in guess where? KV Core. We built a template in KV Core that is our newsletter template. I put the content in once a month. It takes me about an hour. I uh, and then my agents absolutely love it because they don't have to go build a newsletter. They they get to clone my newsletter. They make a couple changes to the link so it goes to their website, not mine. You know their search tools and so forth. But it always has the update. It's a video. That video, by the way, not only is in the newsletter. It, it's that goes out to all of our database and all of our leads. It goes and gets posted on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. And we can repurpose that video for marketing as well. Always a local business spotlight where we're, we're very much at our team and here at the podcast, all about support local. We talked about it last week, didn't we? We did. Absolutely. Um, it's got some educational. I usually get an article from KCM about what's happening or something I think that our consumers, our database is going to like. We might have a testimonial. We'll always promote a listing any kind of local events or anything that's useful in there. And then there's always calls to action at the bottom in the footer of the newsletter that just says, Hey, go get a home valuation. Um, you know, call for an appointment if you want one or just download my app. Those type of things are in it. Okay. So a couple of success stories. So we have seasoned agents on the team and I know for sure that at least two, maybe three of the folks on our team have gotten some business because the newsletter, somebody reached out from their database mm -hmm. and said, hey, Matt, I got your 
your information and we've been thinking about listing our house. Okay. And, and, and prior to that, they weren't doing this. This is the whole point I'm saying is it's one thing that if you do on a monthly right. basis and don't go get some generic newsletter that's repurposed on a national level, you have to have some love and energy and some local love is what I'm saying. I was just going to say the local love is All right. really and the key. It, it, it positions you as an expert and there's so much more you can do it. Last thing that we do with this newsletter is take the newsletter. So it, this is required. Somebody has an email because it's in the system, but we're finding that so many people just prefer texting. Now they don't open their emails. I mean, I just gave you a couple of success stories where somebody did open their email and now they're looking forward because now they're going to get, you know, me. And I'm always talking in this thing about, Hey, you know, someone from our team is going to be, you know, that sent this to you. Or I may say our team, it's not about the Jan show. It's about, I just happen to be the one who records this and Cosmo will be doing videos. He's already started recording videos that we'll put in this newsletter that are about what we do to market somebody's home. And it's all educational and informative and down to earth, right? So we do a blog post of the newsletter. So what we do is then, and I have each agent that wants to do this, takes the newsletter content, creates a blog post, which is incorporated into the KV Core website. And then they can send a mass text to everybody in their database saying, hey, did you miss the email? Click here to get the the September update and market report. That's really brilliant. Or housing report. It's and brilliant and to the point though, you know, because just because texting is becoming more popular doesn't mean you can abandon all the other forms of communication. And that's the key to this, right? Consistency right. across all platforms. All right. Because so you don't know where you don't know when it's going to hit. Absolutely right. So I put this on the list of must-haves because I really do think it's a must-have. If if this is just the one thing that you do to stay in touch with your database, there are others that I think that we'll get into in future part on the series. But this is just one thing that if you set up and you do it consistently, it'll be amazing. You'll be amazed at how it drives business to you. And people will look forward to it if it's quality and you let them know it's coming. See, what I had all my agents do is that the first time is send the, send the newsletter or send the announcement letter that they were on the team. Then they sent the newsletter. And then they called to say, hey, in the new, in the announcement was, one of, uh, I'm happy to be on the team. Uh, let me tell you why I'm on this team and what's in it for you, Mr. Consumer. Mrs. Consumer was a list of things that we call the client appreciation, kind of borrowed from Brian Buffini. But it's what valuable things are we going to do for you without overwhelming you? And one of them is provide you with what's going on in the market every month. And then you deliver it. Now you can follow up and go, hey, did you get that? I just want to make sure you subscribe to that or you look for it. I'm also going to be texting you a link to it and you just let them know and that's it. Okay. That's just a connection. You know, what's funny about the newsletter. I think a lot of people don't do it because it is kind of labor intensive and it does suck up a little bit of time, but you need to shift your paradigm on the newsletter. And not only are you creating a piece, but you're also educating yourself on the marketplace Absolutely. every single month, because here's the deal. I guarantee you that you will know more about your market after putting the, the market stat thing together, or, you know, just information about your area than you would ever be able to pick up if you didn't concentrate on that one thing. So don't look at it just as work to do. Think about it as it's improving your uh, education and your ability to better consult your clients. Okay. And let me give you two more and uh, we'll finish up with the other four, five, if you are going to build a team next week. Okay. Number three. Oh my gosh. Totally become a fan of this. It, it's the G Suite. Uh, cloud storage and sharing uh, app, app, you know, basically the apps that come with your G Suite. So if you have Google for free, you do have some of these, but if you're building a team, you need to go ahead and invest the, there's two levels that you can get. One is, uh, and by the way, if you just Google a coupon, you can probably find 25% off. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, so I think it's now, it used to be five and $10. And I think it's like six and $12 now. Six for like um, a, a certain level of storage, but it's worth getting the $12 a month per user version for a couple of reasons. In the drive, you're able to create shared team drives and it's just so clean. We use it for WBNL coaching. I have one for our team. And why G Suite? Why pay a little bit more if you have a team? Because it becomes the tools that you're going to use to collaborate with your team. It's branded email. So we have Jan and Matt at WBNL coaching. I have Jan at the O'Brien Robbie team .com. Um, shared calendar, and mostly it's the drive. Um, I'm still, you know what? I stopped using Dropbox, Matt, but Dropbox has done some things to try to get back into. They the, have, I've noticed that into my heart again, and they have like a, a cool e-signature piece that you can do, like two or three free a month. 
Yeah. It's called uh I want to call it Hello Fresh, but that's a whole another thing. It's called oh. Hello, it's called Hello Sign in Dropbox. And Dropbox has become even cooler. So Dropbox is out there, but this G Suite I stand by as my our number one collaboration and team tool for organization and structure. The calendar, the drive, we have shared folders and docs. And the thing that I've done is I've used the site. The thing that comes with your Google, and uh, you, you get this in the free version too, but in the team one, the G Suite, um, I, cre I used this, the site, which is like an internet, and built an entire resource center for our team with our logos. I was our, just going to say that. It's like an internet for your company for 12 bucks a user. It's, 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 it's unbelievably okay. low priced. And if you're going to go for each user, now here's the deal. I didn't, I only, I don't have to have 12 per user to um you know so just cosmo and i have that as an example yeah just to push team. the documents down right you can just share and them. then well, you can share outside but if you wanted right. to have branded email and a shared calendar with the people then i can have matt at you know o'brien marabi team and pay for that and he gets branded email if that's important to you but on my team my team wants to have their own email so we're just paying 20 bucks a month 20 22 a month for um, the two of us as team leaders, and then we can share all this stuff with, with whatever email we want to share with. Okay. So you don't have to have it per user, but you need it as the team leaders for sure. Right. You like it too, don't you? Have I you love it. I love it. And I have to, you have to just tell a story, a Jan O'Brien story because she does, Jan is, um, she's not what I would say on the disc a C, but she does have C tendencies and, true, true. and the, her, her love and admiration for G Suite shows. Like, for example, this morning, I got a little text, blah, 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 <laughs> talking about, it was like, actually, it was rapid fire stream of consciousness texting. It was like nine texts in a row. And then one of them was like, oh, I put the doc, I created a folder and put the doc up in G Suite yes! in our drive. And I'm like, you go, Jan. I'm Can excited I just tell about you that. why? I, I, here's why. Because I, I started realizing that I do too much of this. Like, I have stacks of... And I'm like, I'm traveling now, you know, and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I need everything in the drive. I need it all in the drive. I can get it from anywhere. So I've even started to do coaching before we got on the podcast today. I had a client. I now have, I have a, a folder for every one of my clients. I could open it up and I take notes while I'm talking to people. So I have a hundred percent switched to this for everything. It's where I keep notes, working files, and I still write on stuff and I still have to have a list in front of me every day, but I know where everything is. So just, just be aware. Uh, and this is, you don't usually have to be cognizant of this on the, or on the front end, but down the line that G suite is all a part of your whole Google package and your memory that you have for Google and all of that kind of stuff. So don't put a thousand videos up into your drive no. because you will run, quickly run out of space. So be yeah, careful you're, what you're doing. You have kind of have to watch that. Your videos need to go into backup drive and all yep. that anyway. But yep. if you're just working on a project, and obviously we didn't even, you know, it's the collaboration. I can put a document up and Matt yep. or David can be working on it simultaneously. So, oh my gosh, you have to go with G Suite. Okay, my last one for today is These are good tips. marketing materials. And, and I'm, I'm giving you exactly what I have been doing since June to put all of our team systems in place. And it is a lot of work. And what I'm trying to help you, if you're thinking about building a team and you're listening, First of all, you need all these things in place for yourself as an individual agent. And you do. our entire philosophy around team building is you do not hire people until you have your own house in order. So I have, I'm not even following my own advice. I'm putting my house in order while we're also working with our team. Okay. And it's a lot of work. So the last one is marketing materials. Don't underestimate the power of having professional listing and buyer presentations. Now, Matt, I have what we are embracing at WBNL Coaching and on my team here, um, less is more concept. It's one yep. of our core principles. Less is more. Less meaning quality can mean more. So I have uh, had PowerPoint presentations forever for sellers and buyers. We are 100% getting away from that. And we're using our beautiful tool Canva, which Matt is the genius of that. And we are becoming, uh, we're, we're basically creating brochure style, magazine style guides for what we do to list a home and what we do for buyers, the OMT way, the O'Brien Robbie team way, all in Canva. And then when you build them in Canva, it's worth getting the upgrading Canva, which I think is about Absolutely. 10 bucks a month, right? Is it $10 yeah. a month or so? Because that. then you can have your branding Good. kit, right, Matt? Like what are the other benefits of the kit? So Canva is something that you need to have on your list. It's going to be in the apps that I talk about in a couple of weeks. But just to give Canva a shout out, it becomes your 
easy to use marketing suite, right? Yeah, Canva has really taken all the Adobe products, all the things that that professional um, graphic artists use and have, I don't want to use the word dumbed it down because that is not it at all, but, but has really simplified it to a point where anyone can get in there and make absolutely incredible things because it's loaded up with so many templates. To me, that is the key for the non-marketing or non-graphic artist to type of person. You go in and you he practically makes your presentation for you. And there are real estate listing presentation templates in Canva already pre-made that you can change to your colors and your branding, throw your pictures in, put your text and verbiage, and then boom, bang, bang, it's done, right? Or you can start things from scratch. You can go as, be as much, spend as much time in there or as little as you want, not to mention it's got video and now it has music in there. And there's, it's just every time you turn around, I have never awesome. seen a company do more enhancements so quickly. It's just amazing. When COVID hit, they had COVID templates up there within two or three days. Right. You know, on things that you could share with your clients or your, you know, your people, your customers or whatever. So I'm just telling you, you have got to check out Canva. Um, it's easy. It's, you know, for the longest time. Well, I mean, it's not like we're the original users, although I have to tell you, we probably have more <laughs> images in our Canva oh <laughs> background than many because we've been using what for five years now or four and years. Use bonus tip, um, power tip. Use the folders feature in Canva ah. to, <laughs> to be able to be able to um, put your stuff together so you can yeah, easily find, you can it, find it. I'm or, just saying or, that or it, name it, it or name your, your, yeah. your, your piece you're working on so you can find it later because it, it, it's awesome. So that's people on will, the list. People, yeah. People will actually, if they don't know what you're using, they'll ask you where you got your marketing material because the stuff comes out so nicely, especially if you just use their, their templates and just kind of give them your own flair. Yeah. It will look like it was professionally done. So the other benefit of having the pro version there is the, is the free, the templates, not the templates, but the, the, you get, you don't have to now pay, right? You're not paying the dollar per. You can, there are some that's, there are some pictures that only come with the pro the professional version of the program. And then there's some you the still basic. pay for? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, it's all worth it. It's a buck, a, a buck, whatever. So. Oh yeah. There's have, so many pictures in here. It's like, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, my God, the stuff Matt's created. Uh, it's just awesome. So you know what's funny when you look around, and I think I've mentioned this on other podcasts. Like you'll go to places like I notice it's a CVS. It makes me laugh. I'll go into CVS and I'll see you know those little pictures and the banners they have hung up. And I think it's like like oh that was made in Canva. So you, can you start recognizing some pictures that you see all the time? It's really funny. So and templates and so forth. Yeah. So so you need materials for sellers and buyers to be professional in your consultations. You need marketing materials, things that you're going to use. Canva is also going to help you with graphics and uh, things that you post on social or whatever, and all that yeah. needs to be branded to your team. So a couple other things besides Canva, I recommend Breakthrough Broker, getting an account on for Breakthrough Broker. A lot of other market materials are in there as well that you that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then Keeping Current Matters, already mentioned it. Um, Keeping Current Matters, the paid subscription to that is well worth it in my opinion, because it's it allows you to create some branded materials around blog posts, social media graphics, mostly around statistics and all that and what's happening in the market. And plus they do a monthly market report every month, which I'm about to, they released a couple of days ago. I go watch that. I get the slides I want. And that's how I create my marketing material, my marketing update for the, then I put the local stuff in, they give you the national uh, stuff. And they're always talking, not just housing economy. They're talking about what's happening, recovery from the pandemic and the, the economy, uh, jobs, and then housing. And it just makes you feel like you know what you're talking about because you listen, you get educated, yeah. then put it into your words, use their slides, add your local stuff, and off you go. So those are the four that I want to cover today. Just a quick recap. One real estate software solution, KV Core is what we use, a beautiful monthly local newsletter that you put your love and experience into, G Suite, suite of tools, pay for the upgrade and uh, market. make sure you have customized marketing materials and keep it professional quality, get rid of the old school PowerPoint and look at Canva, Breakthrough Broker and Keeping Current Matters. Next week, part two on must have things in place to be successful as an individual or team. Good stuff. I don't want to wish my life away, but I can't wait till next week. Cool, let's do it. Good. Come take my hand and see the world around you The time is right, just let the lights surround you And step by step you feel it coming alive The feeling deep down inside The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration.
Today on Wanderings Zen, we are taking a trip to the Big Apple, uh, not for a joyous celebration, but in memorial of 9-11, uh, which today happens to be. We happen to be broadcasting on 9-11. I know you look back 19 years ago to what and where you were when that all happened. And Jan, you you were talking, I guess everyone kind of remembers that moment, right? Absolutely. So you, where were you? It's so amazing. I was I was in pa in Panama City, Florida. And we, I was with my parents, my brother, we were about to go play golf. We were going out to play golf. We had more family members there, but we were all getting ready to play golf. And I will never forget my mom said, because it was right around nine something, right? Nine oh five, nine yeah. something in the morning when the first plane hit or, or they started reporting it. Yeah, Florida she, time. Was, she was watching the Today Show and Katie Kirk, I think was the, the host. That's and right. And she's like, what? what just happened? You know, it looks like a, and remember before they didn't know what was going on in the beginning. It was like an airline or a plane hit the, and we looked at it and we're like, what? We went and played, we left, we went and played golf. We went nine rounds. By the time we did the the first nine holes, nine holes rather. And we got to the, the place where we're getting something to drink. This is when it was what just happened. And we, clear. Didn't, we did, we did not know about the other towers, mm. Pentagon, any of it. And it was clear that it was like a terrorist attack. And we were just in shock, but I just never forget it. We're like, what? Yeah. And then we went and played golf and then we learned what the heck happened. Yeah, so I, I actually, California time. So it was earlier in the day. It was a little after seven o'clock here when all that started going down. Um, and I was watching the Today Show as a matter of fact, and it was funny. Laura had gone to school that day and I was getting up. Like I always watched the first 20 minutes of the Today Show back then. That mm -hmm. was when I got my news. Exactly. And it was one of those things where you, you were just uh, mouth agaped you know, just in shock watching what was going on and then watching the newscasters watch what was going on was absolutely amazing too, especially in retrospect, right? And then when it was really obvious what was going on, I remember calling my wife saying, have you heard what's what's happening? And and she said, yeah, they had just heard and they were somewhere, I think, in the office on the television watching what was going on. Did you and watch I, it live when the towers came yes, down? Yes, and it was. See, I didn't see it live. I just it, saw it. I did. And, and I it was one of those things, you know, I was going to work. I actually worked at Prudential at the time and I was getting ready to go into the office. And and I, you know, clearly it was like, OK, we have you have to kind of compartmentalize here. Yeah, we have to start calling people to say, you don't, don't worry about coming in. <laughs> the world is not going to happen today, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I remember going into the office later that day, and we, I had put together a newsletter for everyone because it was like there was already no, there was already so much information and no information going around, right? So we were trying to organize what we were going to do with our staff and what we were telling the realtors at the time, and all of that stuff was all happening right, you know, in real time, and it was just what a what. A, it's just I, I, surreal, yeah, it, really. it is just as clear like it's happening right now. You know, it's so Absolutely. weird, and I'm sure that everybody has an experience like that mm -hmm. if they were if they were awake during that time. So you know, please, if you have a chance, go to our show notes and uh, leave a comment down below because I would you know it's very, very fascinating story. to hear what people are going on. You know what's going on. The 9/11 Museum in New York City is probably one of the most. Uh, it's it is. The homage it pays to the fallen, the homage it pays to the first responders uh, is so well done. So and, and if you it. have not been to the 9-11 Museum, it opened in 2015, I believe May of 2015. Mm -hmm. You need to get there at some point. That that has got to be on your bucket list because it is it was it's just so incredibly moving i mean the it's a masterpiece it really is mm -hmm. because how they use the footprint of the world trade center over and over and over really in the design of that uh not only the plaza above but the museum down below mm -hmm. is absolutely brilliant it's just brilliant um I, you know, we went shortly after that. It was about nine months after the museum opened, and we were lucky enough to be able to get a ticket because, you know, it was you know, sold out for a long, long time. Um, and I, it, it's just one of those things where you could literally, you could spend a whole day there if you really wanted to. We, we spent a few hours there and thought, you know what, we, th this is enough. I mean, you kind of get to your fill almost. It's like this is, you know, you, you, you do some crying, crying, you do some reflecting, you get mad, you get, I mean, the whole thing is just, it's amazing. I mean, what was your experience when you were there, Jen? Yeah. I mean, I was just overwhelmed. It was, it was, because, yeah. you know, because here's what's interesting. I had taken several trips. So you go to New York quite a bit 
more, but I remember watching it all being constructed. So, sure. so I was there in New York when they just had it all covered up and they were pulling all the, um, you know, debris and stuff out after the event happened. And then over the couple of years that they started building this and you just started to see the, you know, before it was unveiled. And so I probably made about three trips or so you, you make a, uh, a generally a, an annual trip right. to New York. But that part was amazing to watch the progress because remember right after the church that was across the street had sure. a lot of the stuff that they now, you know, that had the, the firefighters gear and patches and a lot of information that the church that was just in there and it had that piece that kind of flew out and sure uh, of metal. And, and so all that stuff got moved over. And so it was just amazing to watch all that, but to finally go see the, the actual, um, you know, where all the names and stuff are it reminded me a lot of the Vietnam Memorial, which I also yeah, think is quite a lot of that in Washington yeah. is very, I was very emotional going to that for the first time too, but it was just amazing to see how beautifully done it was with the water and the, the reflection and the, and yeah, the, those the, the, the exact actual foot, monument actual there. Footprint of the two buildings is what that actually is, which is just mm -hmm. phenomenal when you look at that for a couple of reasons. When you look at that and you think to yourself, this looks awfully small for those two gigantic buildings to have been in this actual footprint, but it, it really is. And that tree, Jan, that one tree that survived the blast that's right there next yes. to those reflecting ponds. Unbelievable uh, to, to see that. I, it's it's incredible space. And then uh, what I thought was really, really amazing. Well, the, it, the other thing I just wanted to say, the Freedom Tower is that what they call it. Um, yeah. Uh, I love that we just went and just like built this, you know, like here we are, we're just going to go right back. It's a quite gorgeous building, but uh, here we are, we're going to go build a tower again and you know, you're not going to take us down again. And how you know? tall is that building, Jenna Bryan? I have no idea. 1776. Built, it, built that high on purpose. Really? I didn't yep. know that little trivial ah, fact. There you go. A little tip. 1776. Thank you okay, so much. Well, quite wonderful. Okay. Yeah. What else? What other factors? Under, underneath the uh, memorial in the museum itself, there are so many different exhibits and things to look at. But what I, I, I honestly, we stood in this one room for, oh, probably half hour, 45 minutes. And you're directly underneath the reflecting pool. Well, not really reflecting pools, whatever you call those waterfall, you know, it's yeah, yeah, down. Yeah. It's like you're, it's like, that's what I was talking about earlier about how they use the architecture of where those towers were and just repeated it over and over and over again. This particular room was underneath where one of the towers were. It was just a dark room that you went in and just in a continual loop is just the family members reading the names of the fallen. Oh, oh my gosh. Up. And the names would flash up on the wall. It was just that, flash up on the wall, you'd hear another name, it would flash up on the other wall. I mean, it. I, I, oh my God. I mean, oh. three, we're talking 3,000 something, right, yeah. people? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was 2997, I think, mm -hmm. at the World Trade Center, I think. And all the I first think. responders who lost their lives. Oh, I mean, you know, goodness. when you think about that, I know here we are in a situation again now, 19 years later, with the first responders taking front yeah. and center in this pandemic, you know, from uh, the doctors and nurses and everyone that's just, and, and even the essential workers and all the things that are really people to persevere to get us through all this. It's just amazing. Yeah, I, it really is. Teachers, I throw teachers into that. Yeah, no kidding. Right now with what we're going through today, but yeah. You know, and then you, you gotta know, go. You gotta go see. You it. do have to go. But on that very note of going there, you know the 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 plaza and the park and the reflecting are you know the the names around the water features. You know that that is obviously all open because it's open air. The museum has been closed since COVID uh, started, but. Uh, if you are interested in getting more information about the 9-11 Memorial um, there in New York, they do hold daily, I think three or four, maybe five times a day, a 45-minute Zoom that you can go on. You oh, can wow. it, It's 25 bucks or 35 bucks, something like that, where you go on, and the money goes actually back to the memorial, you know, mm -hmm. so you're not just throwing your money into yeah. the pot for somebody. It goes back to the memorial, and you can get a 45-minute um, uh, tour. Of, of the facility, which um, I think sounds fascinating. I haven't done it yet, but I think I'm going to uh, to uh, pay that price. It's not per person, it's per viewer. So if you get a household of, of people together, it's 25 bucks for all of you uh, awesome. to, to take a tour of the 9-11 uh, Memorial. And that's what's happening right now during uh, COVID. But you should definitely, if you get a chance to get to New York, put that one on your bucket list. And you know what, uh, once again, you know, it's so funny you talk about how we will never forget well i don't think there's a chance of that happening because you know uh it, it is something when it rolls around you can't help but to be touched and remember you, you know, know. And, and honestly that did you know anybody that that was involved in it i only had I one didn't. person i met 
in a previous place that I lived here whose brother died there. Yeah. Worked in the one of the financial uh, places and was. Yeah, one of, one of my very dear friends is a uh, used to be years ago a flight attendant, and she knew several people that had impacted not only on the planes that went in there, but uh, you know just mm -hmm. uh, acquaintances through uh, you know people of people. So that was uh, uh, just to hear her stories uh, about just you know the the flight attendants and the pilots, you know all of that, yeah. you know the people that that lost their lives. I just remember what happened. I mean, that was like the shutdown of the airline industry for a bit. And it just led to so many different things. And, you know, and here's the thing that why I'm glad we continue to remember it each year. And is that we, we have a tendency like that happened and so many people's mindsets shifted from, are we really secure? What can happen? Like, cause we had the attitude forever that nothing can happen with, to us. Right. right? And, and, but now I worry sometimes, but it's interesting to kind of bring the parallel back to times today is 19 years later do people you know how do we feel again as a, as a as a american community you know like do we still you know do we do we recognize that that was a big milestone in our development as a country or did we just kind of like okay back to normal and there's a i think it's an interesting conversation to have at some point and because now we have this thing happen this this worldwide event sure it's impacting the entire world and look what it's doing it's just bringing up so many other things and value in systems and, and and polarity and it's not just here in our country i think it's everywhere it's just an interesting well, and just, time and, to be and, on the and, planet. and and to your point you know that that dramatically affected the way airlines and airports operated from that day mm -hmm. right and covid mm -hmm. is going do. to do yeah covid is going to do exactly the night uh, exactly same the same thing so mm -hmm. you know where we're all kind of used to getting bag checked in places in public now it's going to be bag check and a temperature check i mean you yeah. know who knows it, you yeah. know, that could just become the thing that right. uh, that happens very easily could become that. It's very interesting. I was watching TV last night and I noticed or, or they had a uh, segment saying that the only time Time Magazine has put a black border around their magazine was mm -hmm. right after 9-11 when they were doing a, um, you know, a, a memorial issue around 9-11. And they just released their second time they've done that and is about how we're approaching 200,000 deaths in the United States for COVID-19. Wow. So um, there are a lot of parallels in a very, very different way, but a lot of parallels on how it affects your life. Uh, and how it will affect your life for um, years to come. So, well, and the um, thing to take from that is just what we're talking about here. What what, what are the lessons learned? What do you do differently? What right. do you you know see as important in your world and and uh, and appreciate? what we have and, and so on. So difference in this situation scenario though, and it's very striking is that 9-11, the country came together. Uh, that is right. not happening now. So we will see what happens in the future as far as uh, where we go with the pandemic. But um, okay. uh, I don't know. All so right, anyway, well, in our show news today, we have uh, a lot of pictures, links to uh, more information about the 9-11 Museum, as well as a couple of videos that you can go check out. Please, uh, you know, I think it's all important that we uh, have a moment of silence for mm -hmm. uh, the fallen. In remembrance. I, yep. Exactly. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 134 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meets all of our show notes over WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, I love it whenever you come up with series and you hit, hit it out of the park today with uh, part one of this particular series. And I think it's going to be, like all of them, uh, fantastic listening for the next few weeks. Absolutely. We've got lots to share. Uh, definitely go out and check out the show notes. Matt's got great photos and images from the 9-11 uh, Museum and uh, area there in New York. It's just amazing. And we've got uh, details on the stuff we talked about today, the four must-haves, and another five come in next week. That's right. And uh, last little shout out is to, uh, definitely go over and check out our, we're very proud of our new platform, WBNLcoaching.com. You can get over there and check out um, our store. You can take a look at, we have a couple free classes that you could take. Uh, and you can certainly uh, take a look at some of the materials and things that we have available from you for from team building. Actually, there's a free, a free course on just getting started with intro to team building. 
And uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. So we're excited yeah, about it, that. It is officially launched. Yeah, and safe travels, uh, Jan O'Brien, as you uh, jump on that and do your, uh, uh, is this your first COVID-19 travel experience? I forget. Yes, it is. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to hearing how you how your experience goes, because it's, uh, it's a different right. world, different world again. So safe yeah. travels, manana. Okay. So get up, get, yeah, get up, get out, be safe, mask up, and be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you.